Okay, here I am again with the crappy lapel mic again. And you can uh, probably see a little bit of what I want to show off today. It's several items. Because I've been gone for a while, I've been sick for a couple weeks, I've had a lot of stuff that come up, and I was just about not even going to record today because my computer, the USB ports are dying. The USB ports are just dying and it's annoying. I need to build a new computer. But anyways... I'm here, and we're going to look at some stuff. The idea behind this video, I've been planning it for a while now. Uh, FBM printed vehicles. Plain and simple. Just FBM printed vehicles. Just to show that, hey, you don't need a resin printer. You don't need to buy expensive minis to play Warhammer 40k, uh, one-page rolls, whatever you want. You can just FBM print them on anything as low as an old Ender 3 to something as new as a Karate K1, which that's a little bit of a spoiler for a future video. So the first vehicle I want to show off is the first one I printed for this project. It's this one. This is uh, Station Forge's Dominator tank. Uh, it's more of a armored per personnel carrier than it is a tank, per se. How I set up is to be an APC. Uh, these sides, uh, the base files, they're removable. They've got little holes on them, as if you can uh, install magnets. You can put flamethrowers, turrets, whatever you want on the sides there. That's really cool. Uh, this front part on the base files, it's posable. You can have it open, closed. You can have your unit standing on the inside ready to, to uh, deploy. The plow is an optional piece. It's a really cool optional piece. Station Forge is really awesome about that, and yeah, this was the first FDM printed vehicle that I did for uh, this set for the for my one page rolls Dark Brothers Battle Brothers Army, and we can actually see layer lines easily here. There, some of the parts don't fit together properly. There's some issues on the bombs and supports, just clinging on. And mind you, this was printed on a Ender 3 Pro. This took about, I think it was three days to print in total. And it's light. Like, this is light. If you printed this out of resin, it would be heavy. This is an example. This is a big, blocky vehicle. It's basically a, uh, it's a battle brick. Let's move this out of the way. The second vehicle I want to show off, I think it's, it was the second vehicle I printed, is this one. And if you're wondering what this is, this is uh, for another future video. Uh, it's from the Omni 2. It's a cool storage container. But this is the second vehicle I printed. It's smaller, it's cuter, and it's got a second piece. It's got the driver right here. Well, the, the tank commander. This was also completely FDM printed. Like, it was 100% FDM printed. The tank commander is also FDM. This is FDM. FDM, FDM. This took a couple days to print. Printed the commander, the turret piece, uh, with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, uh, at, I believe, 0.16 millimeter layer heights. Some parts, like the body, I printed at, uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height, and the treads, I believe, were at 0.16 millimeter layer height, and I think it came out pretty good. This is gonna be another part of my, uh, one page rolls Battle Brothers army. And I like how it looks. It looks cool. It looks, it looks chunky. It's a tank. It's turret can swivel, and it's got a little dude pointing out forward, directing the tank where to go. And I know I'm speeding through these because I don't really know what else to say about them. They're all cool, and I just want to show them off. This is another one. Uh, it's in sub-assembly still because I plan to paint it. This is another Station Forge figure from their Socrates line, also printed on the Ender 3 Pro. This one's different. I wanted to do a hybrid between uh, FDM and resin. The driver and the gunner or resin parts. Everything else? That's FDM. That's all FDM printed parts, which really goes to show how how much you can get away with with FDM printing. Even the little mesh on top of the buggy. This is a mesh, like semi, like it's not perfect, but it was FDM printed, and that's just really cool. And once I uh, get painted up, I can just assemble it, glue everything in place, and I've got a little vehicle, a little a little buggy with a, with a gunner on top. And lastly, and this is getting into the future video thing, I have 
some bikers. Uh, these were released uh, towards the end of last month, beginning of this past month. These are all printed on my new uh, Curati K1. This one was my first attempt. This one is not the prettiest. It's not the best. You can see errors. This one I printed at 0.2 millimeters with uh, adaptive layers. So anywhere between 0.18 to 0.24 millimeters. This was my first attempt. And these two were my second and third attempts. As you can tell, I learned from my uh, mistakes with the first one. I got better. And I started at point, I believe, point one six millimeters uh, with adaptive layers. Got this one. The little rock is from a collection of little environmental pieces I printed a while ago, all FDM printed. And then this one, I believe, came out the best. This one was printed with a starting of point oh eight millimeter layers on the Creality K1. And I think it came out really well. Adaptive layers still using Orca Slicer. This just goes to show that you don't need fancy equipment. You don't need to go out and buy expensive miniatures. You can easily FDM print them. Like these are all FDM printed and they look good. They look amazing and I can't wait to get paint on them. And this goes back to my last video, video before last, where I shut off some FDM printed Terminators. This was FDM printed and along with that uh, I decided not to make a video about it because I plan to do a whole video about this is my my uh, one page rolls Grimdark Future Battle Brothers Army. You know, a whole video about that later. But this was also FDM printed. This is a jetpack dude. This was printed on the Ender 3 Pro, and it came out really well. You can get away with a lot with FDM printing, and I can't wait to continue. I can't wait to do more projects that cost less than resin printing, because resin printing isn't uh, cheap. It's I think last time I checked, it was about $50 bottle of, uh, of resin from Soraya Tech. But I can get two spools of gray, what I used for this, two spools of gray for about 25 bucks from Elgu. It's amazing, and I can't wait to uh, show more content on this. Thank you all for watching. You guys are awesome. I can't wait to share more content in the future. Hopefully I can uh, get better at recording. Hopefully I can get better at making content again. And uh, if you want to support what I do, I have a Patreon. Uh, go check that out. I'll figure out what content I can release that early. Maybe I'll release pictures of me painting these dudes, because why not uh, show off <laughs> pictures of that later on, on Patreon only, early access, two weeks early or something, I don't know. And uh, I've got Twitch. I plan to start streaming again. I plan to start uh, sharing printer streams there, if they're not already started now. And yeah, I can't wait to share more content. Thank you all for watching, and have a good day.